the crazy agenda can then relieve the sessions or see the sessions. I'm going to start the recording. And as Sanjay was saying, let's enjoy this session. Please remember, we love participation. We love when you guys engage. So feel free to introduce yourselves in the chat, to write any questions or any insights that you have, anything that resonates with you or makes you vibrate. We're looking for that energy. So without further ado, now, Julie, Anne, welcome to the stage. Thank, thank you. you so much. Um, and thank you all for joining us today for this session on scaling impact, what it takes to engage and measure. Um, I'm Julie Davids. I'm the founder and CEO of Plus Media Solutions. A little bit about why um, I'm here today. I've worked in the impact space for decades, both on the for-profit side and the nonprofit side. And I'm sure like all of you, I've seen years and resources and effort being put into messaging. If we had the action associated with all of that messaging, we'd be living in a different world right now. So I feel very strongly about engagement of the consumer, of the audience, um, of any type of viewer and user on, on uh, mobile devices and measuring that engagement um, appropriately. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today. And Anne, I'm so thrilled to have my friend and colleague Anne with me. Uh, thank you. Um, it really is a pleasure to be here. And uh, when Julie first asked me if I could join, I said, I'll do my best to make sure. And I, I'm here. So I have a background, probably less professionally a nonprofit than than Julie, but I have worked at an NGO. Um, my primary background or claim to fame is to be a global a global brand strategist, and I've advised some of the world's most valuable brands. And I would just like to say that nonprofits and NGOs are also brands. It's not just corporations, um, as as each of us is a brand also in today's world. So I just want to emphasize that. Whilst sometimes when you hear that word, you think it's about a businesses, it's about both businesses and anything that people relate to and that 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 has to form a relationship with others. Um, what I do today is I advise brand leaders globally, helping them to integrate purpose and sustainability into brand development, organizational culture and communications. I authored a book um, before purpose was trendy about ba balancing, or not even balancing, because balancing would mean trading off, about fueling purpose and profit, because you can have both of them equally. And, and if you want to turn that into nonprofit terms, it's about um, fueling purpose and funding. Um, and I, I came upon this um, sort of happenstance by accident. Um, and I went on a journey of research and came up with a model from the grassroots up that works, that balances me and we. And we're not gonna get into that today, but if you're interested in learning more, please do, do reach out. Um, I also think it should be relevant to note since so much of this is about, um, uh, Catalyst is about the 17 UN SDGs. Julie and I actually met um, through someone we both know in, at the UN who um, we've each worked with independently on sustainability initiatives. And he knew we would get on and create some magic and amplify each of our own efforts by uniting forces. So um, we're excited to be with you today to have a conversation about engagement, measurement, and scale. And as Julie emphasized, um, communication, which is part of engagement and measurement really are keys to scaling up. It's hard to scale up independently only in your operations. Scaling takes on a much bigger meaning in today's world. To achieve the 17 US, um, UN SDGs and cultivate long-term behavior, we have to create a shift in consciousness. And to create a shift in consciousness, we have to get people to think differently, use words differently, and communicate differently. So communications is key to helping people scale as well as measure. Julie, why don't you introduce the four questions? We both seem to uh, get these questions a lot from our clients. So we thought it was a good way to um, structure our conversation today. You bet. And I would um, just add that I'm coming to you today from a, a conference room in Minneapolis uh, where Sustainable Brands is talking about 
all of these issues. So very, very timely. So first of all, what does it mean to engage, measure, and scale? Why is engaging, measuring, and scaling necessary? What's holding brands back? This is really important. And what are some ways to engage and measure well? So we're going to jump into these four questions, and I'm going to start uh, by asking Anne, what does it really mean to engage, measure, and scale? Okay, well, there's actually no straightforward answer to this. It depends on who you are and what you're trying to achieve. And the one thing that I think is interesting, working both with nonprofits and with, with large-scale corporates as well as social enterprises, People often know what they want to achieve in broad scale terms. You know, I want, I want to reduce my, the big thing right now is energy consumption and, and my carbon emissions. That's today's trendy thing. Um, I want to get more people to recycle, but you really need benchmarks to measure this. And even if you're just doing a, um, an ad campaign and not necessarily applying action in and of yourself, you still need to measure how you're shifting, not only people's perceptions of you, but how you're changing their behavior, how you're moving the needle. And the one thing that's really important to remember in all this, it takes 66 days to create behavior change. So when you're looking to engage people and you're looking to get them to think differently, to understand what you're doing, you need a steady drumbeat. That's really important, 66 days. And that's for base things, things that are more complex to get people to change behavior and to get them to first change how they think, which is clearly the first step in changing behavior it takes much longer than that. So engagement has to do with first, and this is why it depends on your organization, understanding why you're doing what you're doing and what you really want to achieve from it. And again, that sounds so basic and it really isn't. The other important thing is to prioritize your stakeholders. And each element of your sustainability initiatives, each element of any program doesn't necessarily have the same stakeholders. You don't necessarily have to speak to the same people about each different initiative. Am I echoing or is that me? No, I think it's... Okay. Um, so I just I just heard it going funny in the background. So yep, I guess yep. someone must have their, their microphone on. So you have to do your homework. So let's start, let's start your homework both upon about what's material to your business, what matters, and how and if that matters to your shareholders, to your stakeholders, to to, and I'm sorry I said shareholders first, but the one thing I do have to say is people always think. We can ignore the shareholders in a lot of this, and you can't. There's activist shareholders on both sides of the equation, and that becomes really important. But you have to understand which of your audiences these things matter to, because it could be your employees, it could be your customers or, or your funders, it could be your investors, it could be your partners, it could be your suppliers. Not every issue matters to every person. So you're going to engage different people at different levels on different issues. And that becomes a big matrix that can be really messy. And dare I use the, the word that people are getting frustrated with uh, about you know taking a systems perspective, but really mapping out who you touch at each different stage of the issues you're attempting to create behavior change on and have a positive impact on becomes really essential in this. And it's it sounds so easy and yet it's so complex and so heart-wrenching sometimes when you have to say, I, I'm not gonna engage with that audience on this issue. So um, that's the first step. Once you engage and you know why you're engaging people, who you're engaging at each stage, to measure your impact is not just measuring what's happening and whether it's outputs or outcomes, either of those, you have to set KPIs, you have to set performance indicators to say, this is how we're going to be successful, not just randomly say what's going to happen. And I've seen a lot of even nonprofits, sometimes uh, NGOs say, we're, we're going to go out there and unless they have to um, report back to a grantor, they, they just say, we're going to make this change and make good things happen. And they don't say, we want to do it by this percentage. So KPIs are understanding the different things you want to measure, 
but also the percentages by which you wanna change them and move the needle. And all these things are so complex. The one thing that we've learned through research, and Julie and I both attended a conference um, at NYU Center of Sustainable Business. And if you're not familiar with them, get online and look at their stuff. They have some amazing research that's really helpful. And they've done some really big studies, both with um, Circana, which is an organization that tracks consumer purchasing behavior, as well as with Edelman. And they've discovered that the things that resonate most to engage people have to do with health, wealth, and lifestyle. And whilst that sounds obvious, it's actually not. Often people speak about what they're doing and create their measurements, not attaching it to the things that matter to their audiences. Engaging storytelling around these things inspires and motivates your audiences to join you on this journey. And clearly, effective communications play a vital role in guiding your, your audiences to join you in your journey. You can't do this alone. We all have to do this together. And the idea is how you motivate and inspire others to come along through engagement and through measurement and showing how things are going are changing. Scale can't happen without either of those things. Um, and scale also happens by reviewing performance and being honest about it. You know, what is and what is not working? Don't be frightened about real transparency. And that's the thing that we'll talk about after is, is this always feels like risk, but to get the domino effect and get other people to join you, to raise the bar for everybody else who's who's dealing with the same issues that you're trying to have impact on, you have to be honest about what's working and what's not. Because as I said before, scale is not only about increasing your impact, real scale and real change comes from getting everybody to come along. Um, so with that, Julie, why is this all necessary at the end of the day? It seems like kind of a redundant question, right? I know, but it's but. it's so it's so necessary because we can't make significant change unless we engage, unless we measure it, unless we scale it. The other thing to keep in mind is there's significant dollars attached to doing this work correctly. Um, and as Anne mentioned before, we use the word brand for really to cover everything, including NGOs and nonprofits. So don't let that throw you. But what's really important to note is there's a huge financial opportunity to communicate and engage and measure and scale appropriately. Consumers, individuals all around the world, they want to engage. They want to become involved with your cause, with your brand. Because if you think about it, they're predisposed. If they are watching your or attending your campaign, your event, purchasing your product, watching your film, they're predisposed. You have a, a very much the low hanging fruit of activity here. So we also have younger generations who are used to engaging, expect to engage, and are waiting for you to do that for them. Um, we also know that, as Anne mentioned just a moment ago, that the way you are engaging matters significantly. And what, what we like to look at is having those engagement messages not only be immediate, so at that moment of inspiration, when you've got that viewer, that consumer, that user interested in what your messaging is, and the, the tools that you're giving them need to be aligned, absolutely aligned with your content. A quick story from what I heard from one of the presentations today here in Minneapolis. Believe it or not, Mars tried to link their M&M candies with wind power. They created a whole campaign around M&Ms and wind power. The campaign flopped. Why did it flop? Why did it flop? There's no connection between M&Ms and wind power. Consumers just didn't get it. 
So there was no engagement there. There, there the measurement was flat. There's no way they could scale because it wasn't aligned. The other thing we know is that all of your impact messaging must be contextual, relevant, obviously measurable. But when we talk about contextual and relevant, that means, as Anne mentioned, how does it relate to that user's world, that user's health, that user's family? What we see too much of today is a lot of data being pushed out to folks. And people just simply can't take it in because they're not sure, how does this relate to me? So we need to be better at relating to the user directly, contextually, and relevant. And then from that, we need to measure. Another quick story about measurement. I was also listening to another panel earlier today, and Hershey, another chocolate company, said that they had 1 billion impressions on their campaign. And I said, 1 billion impressions, that's fantastic. But what happened? Impressions are impressions. We're not moving the needle on changing anything with an impression. So we need to be really uh, thoughtful about what concrete actions we can attach to messaging and campaigns. So I'm gonna go back to Anne and if with a very important question, what is holding brands back from engaging? Yes, and um, it's it's actually really hard for me not to jump into some of what Julie's saying because I'm dealing with this with some of my clients. And um, one of the things that I probably should have said earlier that's really important, and then we'll jump into, into this notion of fear because fear is what's holding people back. And it's what's holding them back from actually wanting to put down tangible measurements of what they need to achieve to create change. Um, one of my clients at the moment that's I, I can't say who they are because it's a big brand you all would know, but but they they track their brand perceptions in one place. Sustainability has all that technical data somewhere else. And then there's this this other media tracking of impressions and things like that. So we're trying to motivate them to get this balanced scorecard. And Julie will speak a little bit more about this after. And they have a fear of bringing all this together. So even internally, there's a fear of discovering that everything's not syncing up and changing. And they're, they're nervous if they do this and bring all this together and actually start communicating a wider set of, of how they're moving the needle, both internally to people that are more internal to the organization, and then the elements that are relevant to people external to the organization, they're going to have reputation and financial risk because they don't think they, they'll they discover they're moving the needle as much as people are expecting them to. And, and this fear, yes? Sorry to interrupt, but there are two questions that are pretty interesting. There are a lot of questions I want to let you know ahead. But Gravilaki is asking, when you're mentioning sustainability, do you mean environmental sustainability? I mean, for me, sustainability is all three aspects of sustainability for the UN. So environmental, social, and economic. Thank you. And my, Mike is asking, what is your definition of moving the needle? That oh, That's good. I mean, Julie might want to get at that too. Why don't we each answer that? So moving the needle, really good question. But that's where I, that's where we go back to the other thing. It depends on the organization. And the idea is you can't set lofty goals out of the box that you're not going to achieve because that that you lose credibility and you don't bring people along. You have to set goals that, that you can get to um, and surpass often, that's the better thing. But moving the needle is about having an impact that actually makes some level of difference, but you're not gonna for, do that. Yeah, and years. I would say, yes, it makes a difference for you. I mean, when when plus media and we'll get into this in just a minute i know we're we're running short of time but when um when we are measuring impact we are framing everything around the un sdgs but what's really important is what does it mean for you for your organization your goals yeah 
So moving the needle is really variable thing, but the idea is you have to have a greater ambition. You can't start off with just, you know, accepting whatever happens, happens. And a lot of people actually do that, both on the for-profit and the non-for-profit side. Let's just see, let's try this. But even when you're just trying something, you're in a lab and you're just trying, you need to set goals of what makes that feel like you've actually achieved and accomplished something. So, so fear actually is the reason for, for why people don't do any of this or why they don't communicate. You know, on both sides of the coin, and I'll go through this quickly because I think the Julie's next section is really going to be important to people, but you can't let fear stop you from doing things. There's no Goldilocks solution right now, meaning there's nothing in the middle. There's people on the right that are going to get upset with anything you do. And then there's people on the left that are going to get upset with anything you do. And that's not only in the US. These, these um, factions of, of wanting change and wanting no change are, are global because people are frightened of what the future is. And the, some people are just happy to stick with what they know in contentment and they don't want to see change. But change either comes upon you and you're going to like the rug gets pulled out from under you. And that's where we're soon entering or you move forward together. And, and they've shown over and over, if we can get people to come along with us, we can achieve what we need to achieve. But it's a matter of not always using fear for them as well as fear for you, because that stifles everybody. It's about how do you create a picture of progress? How do you create a dialogue that brings people along on a journey. And I'm gonna stop with this because I see where we are in time. And I think Julie's next section that gets into different ways that she's learned through all her work with Plus Media to Measure becomes really essential. Thanks, Anne. Um, so what I would say is we really believe in positivity, in hope, in positive social change, and it's really not that hard. So that's one of the reasons why I created Plus Media. And it's uh, uh, we are a tech impact Marcom company that we plug in to your campaigns, to your events, to your content. We help you communicate your purpose, your impact, all framed around your goals, your KPIs. We engage the consumer in a super simple way. There's no download, there's no sign in. Everything that the consumer or user gets is curated and relevant and aligned with both your message, your mission, and your goals, and where they live, where they are geographically located. And lastly, we actually measure the behavior. So it's not likes and shares and impressions. It's about measuring what people actually do. Um, and just very briefly, I would say, as I mentioned in the beginning, why this is important is that at the, at the end of the day, it comes down to ROI. As much as we would like to think that people are doing all of this work out of the goodness of their hearts, and many of us are, but we need to also translate what the value is. And what we find is by engaging the consumer, the audience in a very, very specific way, it definitely drives ROI. And lastly, I'm going to show you just a visual of how simple this can really be. This is a quick consumer journey. You're in the grocery store and you're interested in shopping sustainably. You scan or click our code on a product. You immediately get your impact hub that shows you exactly maybe even where uh, the farm is that that produce is coming from. You learn ab about the vetted sustainability and climate issues um, from that product, from that company. Um, and, and you find ways to engage uh, with that brand, with that company. So super important to build loyalty and awareness and engagement. And then on the back end, of course, we are tracking all of that user behavior. So the campaign, the event, the film, the brand can know what consumers are doing. So um, our theme is we each play a crucial role in shaping sustainable, equitable, prosperous future. And through measuring, engaging, and scaling our efforts, together we can drive 
have significant and lasting change. It isn't about you and your organization only and what you're achieving. It's about how you bring people along. Um, we only have two minutes. Gosh, I feel like there's so much more we each wanted to get into and we cut short. So um, any quick questions? <laughs> I mean, there are so many questions and so much happening in the chat, but let me go back to a question that Bonnie brought at the beginning. She said a, a contrarian question, could branding of individual initiatives be a barrier to impact? Example, solving big world challenges. And then Jacob said, I am wondering if due to the demands from some funders, the measuring step would be a barrier to engage. Engagement paralysis. And he yes. mentioned not a real I, thing, just made that up. <laughs> I so to to Bonnie and James was it so Bonnie, first of all, um, this is a actually a great opportunity to to do that public private partnership and combine brands in in cause marketing. Happy to talk about uh, that in more detail with you. Feel free to reach out. And then um, same for, uh, was it James? Um, what we find today is funders want data. They're, they're investing in you and they want to know what is actually happening. Um, and it's not enough for funders any longer to just get the vignettes. They want hard data. And, and you know, in many ways, I don't blame them, even though some things are very, very difficult to measure. And, and I think with that, what's really important with the data is it's not just about, about the outputs, it's about what they're resulting in, what the outcomes are from those numbers, because it's very easy to just put data in a chart. And, and you know, that was the old way of sort of reporting how you're, you're um, using your grant or how you're using a, a funding from an endowment or something. Now people want to know what is that doing? What's changing within a community? What, what, what's changing systemically? not just about the numbers, but about the story those numbers are telling about what's shifting. And I would I would completely agree with Julie about coalitions. One of the things we're I'm doing with another client um, uh, that's all about recycling is they're, they've invested into helping municipalities and different regions globally recycle certain materials better. And what we're th what their investment does is help other brands recycle. So we're saying, why don't you bring everybody in together on a coalition to start having greater investment or start showing people how actually your investment is helping a wider set of people. Jelena brings a comment on sad truth, unfortunately. Branding and the narrative of data must connect for funders to invest. Absolutely. Yes. And a big part of what we do is we take the data and we help you tell your story with it. So as Anne was saying, it's one thing to have a number. It's another thing to say, uh, for example, we worked with a, a film and campaign on the homelessness crisis in the United States. So we weren't just reporting on how many people engaged with the film and the resources that we gave them, but how did that translate into actually helping the homelessness and educating people on the affordable housing crisis in the U.S.? So, you know, we need to use the numbers to tell the effective story. Yeah, and I think that education piece, people often forget about that. They're looking at what they're doing, not how people are noticing it and how it's shifting a wider set of people. And that's where the scaling takes on a different meaning. And there, there's a couple of people that, and myself included, we can only see half of the slide. So one of the QRs oh, is- Oh, sorry, that's weird. Yeah, I know. Why don't, I mean, there was nothing really at the end now. Oh, so why there don't we I go. <laughs> <laughs> And I would say just feel free to reach out to us with any other questions. We're um, we're very accessible um, and happy to you know answer your questions and continue the conversation. Yeah, it's definitely something that we could spend a whole day on. Yes, <laughs> yes, easily. And this is this is my part. Uh, so I want to thank you both for being here and preparing this.
I was getting messages on the side saying like, this might be a missed opportunity because there's so much to build on. And I was wondering, should we do a little question and see if there's interest? Because we could definitely set up at another time, another date, you know, keep on building on these conversations. And Julie, I know that you've offered the, the contacts so that people can reach out. So thank you for that, because that's a wonderful opportunity. But I always see Catalyzing Change Week as the start of a conversation. So of course, to both of you and to all the Catalyst members and Catalyst non-members, know that this is only the beginning, right? So the beautiful thing is that now we have a lot of questions, we have a lot of insights, and we can continue being here because Catalyst does exist and we're all on the same journey. That's right. And what I would close with is we know that solutions exist. We just have to be active in getting them out there. Yeah, I would agree with her. And I just want to say one thing to Dr. Um, Jelena. I just lost your, your message. Um, Jelena Haynes. Yes, absolutely. There's a lot of talk about branding. And Julie and I are both on the IA Independent uh, uh, so International Association of Advertising, Advertisers um, Sustainability Council, because our whole mission is to make it not about talk. Our whole mission is to make it real and not just varnish. So we would agree with you. And that's what we've been spending our careers working against. So thank you for that comment. Okay, so thank you all for staying five more minutes. I know there's still a lot to discover and uncover and share, but I want to be mindful of your time commitment. And I want to thank you again, Anne and Julie, for taking the time, preparing the presentation, sharing generously all your expertise, all your experience, and allowing us to keep on thinking, brainstorming, and building on these such important matters. And I want to ask you if you have any final words before we close the session. Hi, Ashley. Hey, I was just waving goodbye because I have to go to work. Um, but so nice to listen to this session. And I would love to keep being involved and maybe follow up conversations or something like that. Thank you all so much. Amazing. You're welcome. Thank and good luck at work. So, yeah, and so thanks everyone. Before before I log off is that, and I know people are tired of hearing about it being a journey, but you're never going to get everything right out of the box. <laughs> this actually is all about figuring it out as we go. There's no formula out there. This is new. Love that. Okay, so with those words of encouragement, I feel like Catalyst is a stage for us to share what went well, what didn't go well, and the questions that we have still. So we can build on that collaboratively, collectively. So thank you again, Anne and Julie, for being here. Thank you to all the assistants and participants. I loved how active you were during all the session, bringing all your questions, all your comments. It was lovely to spend this almost 40 minutes with you. So thank you. And I hope to see you soon. Great. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.